Welcome to Solicited Advice to Live Your Best Life. I'm your host, Kate Hess. You're in the right place if you're tired of feeling stressed, anxious, and overwhelmed, or if your critical inner voice is the loudest voice in your head. Join me each week for actionable, healthful, and healing habits based in mental and emotional hygiene practices to help you turn your self-criticism into self-love. And along the way, bring more freedom, serenity, resilience, and joy into your life. I'm a mental and emotional hygiene coach, and I'm thrilled to join you each week to answer your questions and help you live your best life. Hi there. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today's question is a topic I'm always working to deepen my knowledge on. And while I usually do a little research for each episode to fact check myself and make sure I'm bringing you the most current scientific information, I did a bunch of additional research this week to combine with my existing knowledge and practices, so we're learning together on this one. Today's questioner asks, what's the deal with working with the energy of the moon? I keep hearing that I should be doing certain things during certain phases, but it all feels a little woo-woo to me. Over the last several years, I've been doing a lot of thinking about and experimenting with the cyclical nature of our lives. As part of my journey to recover from burnout and build my best life, I've been leaning into the idea of honoring the rhythm of life instead of constantly trying to do all the things all the time. Let's start by rewinding a few hundred years. Only 100 years ago, less than half of American homes had electricity. Go back 150 years, and it was unheard of to have electricity in your house. And While there has been much in the way of technological progress over the past 150 years, there's been little to no change in our physiology. In other words, your body is still wired the same way your great-grandparents were wired when their houses weren't. Before electricity filled the night with light, we relied on fire and the moon to light the night. After sunset, All illumination came from candles, fireplaces, oil lamps, and the glow of the moon. That meant that if you wanted to do something after sunset, you had significantly more light during the few days leading up to and right after the full moon. Because of this additional light, it's natural for us to be more active during the full moon, and the absence of light around the new moon makes it natural for us to be less active and to sleep more. And recent research has shown that to still be true. A 2019 study looked at people living in rural indigenous communities without electricity in Argentina, as well as Argentinians with full access to electricity and more limited access to electricity. The study also included college students in an urban setting in the U.S. Across the board, the research found people slept on average 20 to 90 minutes less during the full moon than during the new moon. The impact on sleep was more pronounced in those living in the rural indigenous communities, but the disruption in sleep was observed in all population groups studied. Studies have also found the moon has an impact on our hormones, which in turn impacts both our sleep and our ability to regulate our emotions. We know bright light can delay the natural release of melatonin in our bodies. Melatonin is the hormone which signals your body it's time to wind down and get ready for sleep. The full moon can trigger a delay in the production of melatonin, which impacts the quantity and quality of our sleep. You're probably familiar with the term circadian rhythm. It's our natural sleep-wake cycle that repeats every 24 hours. Infradian rhythms are part of a longer cycle and include things like a menstrual cycle, pregnancy, and seasonal affective disorder. In non-humans, think of things like hibernation and migration. While research on menstrual cycles sinking with the moon are often inconclusive, a smaller longitudinal study found that women tended to menstruate with the moon intermittently and found the correlation declined as women aged and when they were exposed to artificial light at night. The researchers suggest these results indicate at one point menstrual cycles may have been more synced with the moon, but that linkage has deteriorated with modern lifestyles and artificial lighting. If you don't use a hormonal birth control method, you may find your cycle naturally aligns with the moon cycle. 
The window from new moon to full moon may be linked to the time from the end of your last menstruation to ovulation. From full moon to new moon, you may find your body moving from ovulation to menstruation. Okay, so we've covered the science behind why physiologically we respond to the moon, but over and over results find that the impact of the moon on our body diminishes the more and more we're exposed to artificial light at night. So if you can just turn on the lights and decrease the impact, why should you care about the cycles of the moon? So many of us live in a society that encourages us to wear stress, overwhelm, and exhaustion like a badge of honor. I remember a time when I was so proud of consistently putting in 14 hours a day at work. And I also remember a time when I cried under my desk every afternoon. The truth is that we physiologically can't sustain the level of constantly going and doing that we strive for. Your body can't tell the difference between the stress of work and the stress of being face-to-face with a hungry bear. We talked a lot about the stress response in episode 8 of the podcast. If you need a refresher, go back and check out that episode. But, in a nutshell, constant stress sets us up for burnout, disorder, and disease. Building in times of rest and introspection allow us to break the cycle of stress and give our bodies a chance to reset. Before electricity, this cycle was naturally built into our lives. When the moon was full, we were able to stay up later and do more with the additional light it provided. And when we moved into a new moon, it allowed us to not only sleep longer, but also provided space for quiet activities like introspection. The growing of the moon from dark to light is the time for us to grow as well. This inspiration phase is the going, doing, making stuff happen part of our cycle. It's a time to use the light of the moon and the shorter nights of sleep to ignite your creativity and productivity. It's a time of inspiration, growth, and curiosity in the world around us. But if we push ourselves to stay in the inspiration stage continuously, we burn out, we lose our ability to be inspired at all, and we remain in uninspired burnout until we've been able to replenish ourselves. The reflection period as the moon wanes from full moon to new moon is a time to slow down and focus more on the being than the doing. The increasing darkness outside is a sign to turn your focus inward. You may also notice it's accompanied by a drop in energy, further encouraging you to be quiet and rest. During this time, we're called to enter a state of introspection and reflection. When we take the opportunity to go inward, we may find things we've hidden away. These might be bright, shiny things, and they may be slightly less shiny, but no less important things. By honoring both the inspiration and introspection stages of this monthly lunar cycle, we bring balance into our lives. As the old adage goes, too much of anything is never a good thing. By honoring the monthly shifts, we give ourselves room to celebrate not only our creativity, but also the deep knowledge within ourselves. Finding a natural balance between these two allows us to create and replenish so we don't become burnt out. Emotions, good and bad, stress, trauma, all of these things become embedded in our bodies. When unheard, they can manifest as disorder, disease, and chronic health issues. Remember, if you listen to your body whisper, you won't have to hear it scream. By taking the time to turn inward and listen to our bodies each month, we're not only able to hear their messages, but we're also able to acknowledge these messages have been received. In acknowledging, and if necessary, acting on those messages, the body begins to process and release the emotions, stress, and trauma it's been holding on to. And in hearing the whispers, we've helped prevent it from screaming for our attention. While you could cycle through inspiration and introspection independently of the moon, Pairing it with our physiological response to the lunar cycle allows us to find more ease in the process. Just as the moon will move from darkest at new moon to brightest at full moon, you're also invited to monthly move from the darkened days of introspection to the bright days of inspiration. Through the process of introspection, you break down and release what you no longer need. 
learning lessons, and creating a fertile soil in which you're able to plant your seeds of inspiration to help them grow faster and stronger than before. Think of a vegetable garden grown in hard-packed clay without any fertilizer or nutrients added. Now imagine a garden of light soil enriched over many planting seasons with nutrient-filled compost. Which do you think will produce better tomatoes? The same goes for you. When you begin to move in harmony with the moon, you grow better metaphorical tomatoes. And the longer you flow in this rhythm, the more things in your life improve. You're healthier, you're more creative, you're more productive, and you're able to achieve things you might not have thought possible. And it all starts with creating space for doing as well as being. While this is a whole extra topic, I did want to quickly mention that the seasons are another infrading rhythm that we can benefit from learning to harmonize with. Similar to the lunar cycle, the seasons provide a time to simply be, rest, and draw inward during the fall and winter, and a time to do and create during the spring and summer. Working with the lunar cycle or the rhythm of the seasons doesn't have to be a major shift in the way you live your life. For instance, I focus more on yin and restorative asana practices during the inwardly focused times and return to more active hatha and vinyasa practices during times of doing and creating. I'm still doing yoga every day, but I'm tailoring the practice to what the stage in the cycle calls for. I'll add a link to a blog post in the show notes which goes into more details on learning how to work with the energy of each season if you're interested in learning more about this topic. Are you ready to start experimenting with working with moon cycles? I've created a quick start guide with everything you need to create your own lunar routine. You can download your copy at nourishnestbreathe.com forward slash P15. That's P as in podcast and the number 15. But even if this still feels a little woo-woo and you're not sure you want to start planning around the moon, consider taking time each night to simply look up into the sky and notice the moon for a minute or two. Many of us live in brightly lit cities, and the light from the moon is much less noticeable. With lights in yards, on houses, lighting streets, night is turned into day, and we have to actively seek out the moon glowing in the sky. Simply taking a few minutes to notice the beauty of the soft glow of the moon can make a difference in your life. Studies have found sky gazing reduces stress levels. So try to build a few minutes to look into the night sky into your evening routine. I like to look out the window while I brush my teeth each night. The biggest takeaway from today is that there's so much value in offering yourself the grace to incorporate times of inspiration and introspection, times of going and doing, and times of resting and being into your life. If you want to experiment with incorporating these different ways of showing up in your life with the lunar cycles, don't forget to grab your copy of the Quick Start Guide for Working with the Moon. Again. You can get that worksheet at nourishnestbreathe.com forward slash P15. That's P as in podcast and the number 15. And I'll add a link to that in the show notes. Thank you so much for joining me today for this episode. Please hit subscribe wherever you receive podcasts. And if you've got a question you'd love to hear addressed on a future episode, please submit it using the form on my website at nourishnestbreathe.com forward slash podcast. I'll include that link in the show notes. Remember, living your best life isn't about changing your life. It's about changing the way you show up for your life. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Solicited Advice to Live Your Best Life. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a moment to leave a rating and review wherever you subscribe to your podcasts. Your rating and review makes it possible for other people just like you to discover this podcast. And don't forget to check out all of my free resources at nourishnestbreathe.com forward slash resources. I'm sending you a great big hug. You've got this.